grab your pack and your radio. It's time to go hiking and hamming. Hi y'all, Lou with Hiking and Hammond here. I know it's been a minute since you've had any content from me and I wanted to tell you what's been going on and that'll lead into this video. So this video is about what I learned about activating at a national monument or anything within the National Park Service. As many of you know, and if you didn't, here's the story. I took a new job and moved from the Augusta, Georgia area to the Huntsville, Alabama area. And of course I had to deal with selling my old house, buying a new house, getting moved into the new house, unpacking, which is mostly done, and taking care of all those little things around the house that you have to do to get set up and going. Um, right now we're still working on getting the, uh, uh, the shack set up and getting antennas up. Right now I'm operating off an in-fed half wave. Um, it'll do for now. I've got a brand new DX Commander Signature 9 sitting in the shop or in the shack and as soon as I get a chance to put it together, once the yard is ready for it to go in, it will go in. Still got to figure out where to run some coax too, but we'll get that one worked out. Um, and before I do that though, I've got some trees in the backyard that need to come down, a couple of dead ones, a couple of ones that are leaning towards structures, don't like that. And uh, also I need to fence in the backyard for Zeke the trail dog. Having said that, so I took this new job, came to Alabama, and right after I got here, they said, hey Lou, we needed to go to Albuquerque for a week for some business meetings. So that's what I did. And I took that opportunity, and I'm gonna start doing this uh, when I travel as much as I can. I took the TX500 with me so that I would have something to activate with at any parks that I might have a chance to get to. So on day one, well, not really day one, the second day that I was there, I decided I'm going to go try to activate Cibola National Forest. Well, that turned out to be a mistake because I wasn't ready for that altitude yet. I had not yet adjusted to the altitude. Now, I should have known this because a couple of years ago, I was in Colorado Springs for some work for a couple of weeks, and it took me two, three days to get uh, really acclimated to the altitude. Um, and I hadn't given myself time to get acclimated in Albuquerque yet. Now, having said that, I only had a week there, or really four days, so I had to act fast. But I tried to go up and activate Cibola National Force. That didn't quite work out. Uh, I just, literally, I was not feeling it. I felt like crap. So I decided, you know, we're gonna scratch this. We'll try again another day. So the next day, what I did is I went over to Petroglyph National Monument to activate there. And that's where things got exciting. So those of you who were working me or trying to work me, and I know I left some pokes out there hanging because it was a short activation. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, unfortunately, that park closes at 5 p.m. local time, and I was up against the clock there. Uh, after my meetings were over, I headed straight over in the rental car to uh, Petroglyph National Monument had to look around, try to figure out where I could activate. So that was step one in my research. I didn't really do well enough. Um, that was kind of spur of the moment. Uh, but I went over and tried to get it activated, and I did. Now, first thing I did is I went over to the visitor center, talked to the nice volunteer over there, and she said, hey, there's a parking lot. Go back down the road about a mile, and there's a parking lot on your right that has plenty of room. I would recommend there's two choices, actually. Okay. So, um, Walking over it, that's probably just about close to whatever. So, mm -hmm. one mile west of here, we have okay. Rinconada Canyon. Okay. And it has 300 petroglyphs um, and a big car park. Ah. So that's good. Piedras Bacardas, the car park is kind of small. But this one, um, the gate's closed, but not till five. Okay. So that would be a really cool place, um, I think. So we're here at the visitor center. Mm -hmm. you go back out to the light, turn right. It's just one mile. You'll see a little sign. There's nothing else in that mile. Right. I, I saw it when I came up, so yes, I wasn't sure are. about that. Okay. So it's got a nice big car park, and it's got picnic tables and toilets Perfect. and stuff like that. So it's a good place to be. And, then and that's where I went to. So if you're ever out there, you're activating Petroglyph, check that place out. That, that parking lot will work great for a, a small uh, activation. Now, in the midst of this, as those of you who may have been trying to work me at the time heard, a park ranger showed up, and I had a long conversation with him, which kind of cut my activation a little bit more short. Um, and this is where research point number two comes in. He told me, hey, you're supposed to have a special use permit to activate in a national park. 
As it turns out, I did not need a special use permit to operate or to activate at Petroglyph National Monument. And I'll come to that in a minute. However, it is also accurate, and he was right, that at many of your national parks and national monuments, they do have specific guidelines, or you do have to have a special use permit to activate a park or activate those, those places as a parks on the air entity. So you want to do your research. If you have a national park or a national monument that you have scoped out that you want to go activate, make sure you check with them before you go to see if there's any special permissions that you need, if you need a special use permit or anything else. Some of the monuments have pretty extensive lists. Some of them have no requirements at all other than that you contact the park supervisor. In the end, on this activation, it worked out okay. I did not need a special use permit. That was confirmed by the supervisor of that particular park who, by the way, as it turns out, her husband is a ham, so she already knew. And as she told me, she said, look, this is a national monument that's in an urban area. We've got a lot bigger problems to worry about than ham radio operators. And she was a big fan of amateur radio anyway. So that worked out in the end. So if you go to, to activate Petroglyph, make sure you say hi to the park supervisor. She is awesome. So having said that, again, lesson learned for national parks and national monuments. Do your homework, check ahead, see if you do need a special use permit. It looks like I'm going back out to New Mexico again this fall on business. There's some other places I want to activate. For instance, White Sands. Um, I'm gonna be down in that area and I know I do need a special use permit for White Sands. So we're gonna look at that and see what we have to do uh, beforehand to make sure I'm good to go to do an activation from White Sands. So with that, Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be in a point where I can start doing some content again. We've got some more stuff coming up. I'm going to have a, a mobile install video that I'm going to do here in a couple of weeks. I'm still waiting on some parts to arrive. Once that happens, uh, I'm going to do a video on how I installed my new FTM 500 in my 4Runner. So I know some people are looking forward to that, uh, especially over on the off-roading side. Which brings me to one last thing channel's probably going to expand a little bit in its scope because off-roading is probably going to get added in. I'm not going to start a second uh, channel for that because I'm not going to do it enough to justify it, but uh, I, that I think is going to kind of start getting in some off-roading overlanding type stuff. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I'm not going to go out mudding. That's not the intent. It's more of uh, trails and getting to remote places. I've got my eye on somewhere where I want to go do some off-road work um, and do a POTA activation, and we'll see how that works out. So anyway, thanks for watching. It's great to be back, and we'll see you soon. 73.